Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we're going to be taking a look at something really quite fun, and that is this Technicolor Compact Disco Beacon. Now if you're wondering what one of these does, it pretty much does what it says on the tin, it turns your beacon into a bit of a ray. With the beam turning all various different colours, you'll be able to spot this thing from a mile off, and for that reason, I think it's really very cool, so let's take a closer look. Now in case you hadn't noticed, the machine is currently switched off, but we're quickly going to change that by flicking this lever down here, and as you can see, our beacon really does spring into life. All of the colours are travelling up through the beam, and I have to say, it really is quite impressive. One thing that I really like about this design is the fact that the transition between the colours is actually very smooth. You don't have any white popping in between the colours, it is all just a nice transition going right the way through them. But once you get bored of that one, for whatever reason, all you have to do is just head down here, flick this lever once again, and as you can see, our beacon returns to normal, you are left with the regular white beam, which still looks cool, but it's not quite a disco beacon, is it? In terms of the actual mechanics behind this thing, I should probably start off by explaining how I actually changed the colour of the beacon beam, because it's a recent addition to Minecraft, and some of you might not have heard about it. So essentially, if you place stained glass in front of the beacon beam, as you can see, it changes colour. Now what we have here is a bunch of sticky pistons that push the stained glass on top of the beacon beam, meaning that it changes colour automatically, which really is quite cool. In terms of the redstone behind this thing, most of it is powered by this redstone clock, which then runs into this timing circuit. What that allows us to do is extend all of these pistons one after another, so this piston extends, pushing the orange block in front of the beacon beam, which changes its colour, and then it retracts, and immediately afterwards, this one extends, pushing this block above the beacon beam, meaning that it changes to purple. The same thing happens here, 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 and here. Then when it gets to the top, the redstone clock will have come back around and the whole process will start again. It's really quite simple, but it's relatively effective. For anyone that wants to take a closer look at the redstone behind this thing, perhaps play around with the circuitry, or even have a first-hand look at the disco beacon itself, as always, there is a world download down in the description for you to check out. But anyway, now it's time to crack on, and I'll show you how to build it. So you want to get things started with a 4x5 area, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to chuck down our beacon, so you want to place that dead centred in the middle with two blocks to the back and one block to the front, so that is right there. Then you want to place a block here with a sticky piston facing across, and then you want to place a block, another sticky piston, a block, another sticky piston, and then you can take out all of those ones and then do the same thing on the other side, but you want to place two blocks, and then that's the sticky piston, and then a block, sticky piston, block, and then a sticky piston, and you can remove all of those temporary blocks because those are going to be pushing the stained glass across so that it intersects your beacon beam. Next up, you want to head round the back over to this sticky piston right here and place three blocks across like this with redstone there, a repeater, and then redstone dust. Now what we're going to be creating here is known as a redstone snake, and this is going to be connecting up all of our pistons. So you've got an upside down half slab there with redstone dust on the top, then you want to place three blocks there, and then another upside down half slab that is redstone there, with two repeaters running across just like this, redstone there, and then a block just like that to stop those two connecting up, redstone dust on top of that one, and then two blocks like this, a repeater, redstone dust, as and I'm sure you can tell, there is a bit of a pattern forming here, so we've got the upside down half slab, and then the three blocks right there with the redstone dust on top of both of those, and then the two repeaters facing in this direction, then we've got our upside down half slab, a block like this, our three blocks going across like that with redstone dust on top of both of those, our repeater, and then redstone dust, and finally we just need one last upside down half slab, and then a block up like this with redstone dust on top of both of those. Now to connect to all of these pistons, we're going to be placing blocks like this with redstone dust on top of all of those, and then you want to grab another block, place it across like that with comparators running into those pistons. Now you may be wondering why am I using comparators, but it's simply because they've got a shorter delay than repeaters, and that's what we need to get that smooth transition between all of the colours. So to start things off, you just want to head down here and place two repeaters, set both of them to two ticks, then you're going to be running out into a block with another repeater set to two ticks, that is going to be running out into another block with a repeater set to two ticks, and then two repeaters, both of them set to one tick, then you want to place a block here and redstone dust right here. Now that is the redstone clock done, to power it all you have to do is place a sticky piston facing downwards right here, take out this block, then you want to place a block off to the side with a redstone torch on the side of that one, a dropper facing upwards with a hopper running down into that one, and once again chuck any old item in there, then you want to place a block off to the side, a comparator running out from that hopper there, and then a sticky piston facing downwards with a redstone block on its face, that will power that redstone and activate the redstone clock. Finally, you want to head over here, place a lever on this block next to the redstone torch and the dropper and the hopper. That is going to be the input for the circuit, which allows you to turn it off and on again, which is pretty useful. But anyway, now you just want to chuck in all your stained glass. So that is the orange there. Then we've got the purple over here. You've got the blue right there. 
the yellow over on this side, the green here, and then finally the pink. Of course, you can use whatever colors you like, but that seems to be a pretty good combination. But anyway, if you flick this lever right here, as you can see, we got ourselves a very nice looking rainbow beacon. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.